ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I can't take myself seriously. I'm sorry. That's actually the fourth attempt at doing the ho, 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 Merry Christmas, and I just wasn't made to be Santa Claus. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm uploading this on Christmas Day 2019. Now, I have the pleasure of casting for thousands and thousands of people from tons of different countries and tons of different backgrounds and cultures. So I'll just start it off by saying, if you don't celebrate Christmas, I'm going to be eating a lot of cookies, okay? And um, no worries if you don't celebrate Christmas, but there's a lot of viewers out there who do. And there's a lot of people who are going to want to take a very nice nap after they eat cookies like me. And they want that carb coma, the instant nap. I'm giving them fat slob. Fat slob is probably the most popular player on my YouTube channel over the years. Uh, maybe players like Blue Coffee, maybe players like the Viper, you know. Uh, they might they might come into the conversation. But fat slob, this will be the second upload in December of 2019. And uh, this is another game and a different one than what we saw a few weeks or maybe a week or two ago. Um... Fatsob always goes for Vikings, always goes for Black Forest. Over 7,000 games with these settings. And he always sends his fills forward, walls up nice and early. And in doing so, he sets himself behind. Now you'll see Slave Tiss. Now Slave Tiss, he didn't have a bad rating at all, uh, 1571. Uh, did Fatsob 1680. Slave Tiss, he sees the walls. I feel like he probably knows Fat Slob's reputation more than some of the previous players did. And he is doing what I would probably do if I were to play Black Forest. And I would start off by not walling because it hurts my economy. Solid build order, four on wood, going out to the border now. Good stuff. And we're going to have time to talk about all of this. One thing I want to say before I get to the final thing that I'm thankful for, and this is going to be super cheesy, super feelsy, just a heads up, is that... Fatsob does not have the better map, okay? Uh, players get a 7-tile gold and two 4-tile gold. You'll see the 7, the 4, and the 4 here for red. Then you get a 5-tile stone and a 4-tile stone. You'll see that right there. Then there's extra resources. And here is the extra 3-tile gold. And there's always one more, and that is here. So notice how Fatsob can't really get to that one. Uh, but green can get to this one quite easily. Also, there's always 5 relics in every map. Boing, boing, and boing. That's three. And then there's two over in Fat Sub's base. So three to two relic split, assuming they get all the relics. And then an extra, what's this come out to? 2,600? No, sorry, 2,400 gold for red. Uh, some people have pointed out in some of my Fat Sub uploads that Fat Sub has better maps. All right. All right. So what I've done with this 12 Days of Christmas upload schedule is I've just talked about something I'm thankful for uh, in relation to like Age of Empires 2 community usually. This has been a long wild ride for me and it's a pleasure for me to be able to just sit down and talk about some some guy who plays some wacky settings and uh, somehow entertain you all and make, you, make your life uh, a bit better. Um, so I'm a very emotional guy so the more jokes I make during this the better for me. But guys this like this whole thing that I've fallen into, whatever you want to call it, content creation, community building, uh, diary of the mouth, it has actually saved me in more ways than you might know. Uh, I had some rough, 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 rough times uh, leading up to my early 20s. I'm 26 now. And just really struggled with finding myself, really struggled with being comfortable in my own skin. And I think that's what this really did for me. I, I get online... I basically make fun of myself, like, haha, T90 Farms, haha, this or that. And, you know, I was able to interact with people when I did, wasn't comfortable interacting with people outside in real life. And, um, you know, the, the whole video game thing for me really started because I just, I needed somewhere to go that was kind of a, an escape in a sense. And, um, you know, that escape turned into me learning more about myself and being more confident in myself and, uh, it's it's just it's the the biggest thing that I'm thankful for because um, it has taught me a lot about myself over the years and uh, it will continue to do so and it's also something I'm really passionate about. So when you guys like come here to <clears throat> to unwind because work is crappy or 
you're in a rough, you're in a relationship problem, uh, breakups, uh, finances, whatever. Uh, just know that I'm not just some guy where my life is perfect making content and you guys just happen to, to get past some of your problems. We're all human. And I, I've had some, I've had some absolutely rough times, uh, things I'll never talk about because you know, it's not worth get bringing all that up, but, um, you're not alone. Okay. So thank you guys. Merry Christmas. And while we have time to wait, actually, if it's cool with you, well, it has to be cool with you because you can't, this isn't a stream. You can't interact with me right now. <laughs> I'm actually going to talk about my family a little bit too. I'm really thankful. Um, like I was definitely one of those kids that grew up in kind of a situation where when I felt depressed or upset or anxious, I would, I would, I would say why. You know, my parents loved each other, had supportive uh, siblings and things like that. So that actually was very hard for me to, um, I just didn't understand. I feel like society's like, well, other people have more reason to be upset than you. And uh, I, anyways, I'm really thankful that my family was always supportive of me, even if I didn't understand. Uh, and I'm also very thankful that, you know, now that I've been doing this full time for like two and a half years that they, they have kind of realized how much of a passion I have for it and have backed me. Uh, I believe me, they did not do that originally. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to leave the story. I, I will leave that story for later, maybe, because I feel like I'm not talking about the game as much, but uh, rant over. Enjoy your Christmas if you're celebrating it. Fatslob, he's going to enjoy some stone walls. Um, so... The thing that cracks me up about Fat Slop is he always sends two villagers to wall. It's so peculiar. Economy is the building block of Age of Empires 2. The more villagers you have, the more resources you're going to have, then the more military you can make. So he sent three villagers at the start. Listen, I get there because maybe they will rush you. So you want to make sure you get those walls down. But why he sends two villagers to wall now doesn't make a whole lot of economical sense because he could easily take his good old time with one villager. Now, I would I would love to do the math and see it. Maybe the logic is he builds the walls faster with these two villagers and then he gets back to working faster and then that, that might actually be better for him economically. I'm not sure. Um, someone out there is probably going to start crunching the numbers. <clears throat> Spirit of the law. <clears throat> but, um... But anyways, somebody will do it. Some free content ideas for you. And he's walling with two. So, all right, do your thing, buddy. Live your life. I won't hold you back from your dreams. There's his market. He built his blacksmith. And Slavetus, who is 100 points less than him, seems to have it more under control. 40% of the way to Castle Age. When have we seen this before? People like Fat Slob videos. And there have been a... There's like quite a few differences within the Fat Slob videos, I have to say. Uh, because players always throw different things his way. But it pretty much always turns into this. I think the Fat Slob is back video... And you should check out the Fat Slob playlist if you haven't already. It has all of them. But I think that one, which was more recent, so it wouldn't have been... It's not this one, obviously. It wasn't the one before from a week and a half ago. It was, I think, the one prior to that. But, but anyways, um, he was rushed heavily in every age. Dark Age, Feudal Age, Castle Age, and he still ended up getting the stone walls up. The games that don't turn into this, Fat Slob just loses early because someone vill rushes him. Or he resigns because someone Phil rushes him, so... <laughs> but man, he's doing the farm thing again. He loves this area of his TC. Fatsob's still not in Castle Age. Red is already there. And Fatsob's going for so many walls! Oh my goodness. New TC for Red. More villagers equals more resources. That is, that is what the boomers do. Alright, boomer. You guys are probably just as tired as, of that joke as I am now. But, sorry. Just have it. The scout will just attack that wall. It will take, uh, quick math, like, 
over 15,000 more hits, maybe, that that scout to get through. And Fatsob, oh boy, he's going to add another 2,000 to that. How many layers of stonewall do we have? We have the time for this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just say it's eight. Eight thousand sixty. Math in my head. That comes out to being like thirteen or fourteen thousand hits. If that scout's doing one damage per wall, so then you have the palisade walls at two fifty. So, oh, he's doing three damage to the palisade wall. Whatever. Figure it out yourselves. So I'll actually tell this story to you guys. I'm not a big fan of Red's TC here. I feel like it should be up against the wood or the stone or something, but it's whatever. Um, I'm going to tell a story to you guys. So I mentioned how you know, I kind of fell into this, this job, so to speak. Um, I always did this for fun. It turned into a hobby when I would get five views in every video and then 10 viewers on every stream. And then you know I stream on Twitch really frequently now with commentary and... Um, tournaments, all those things. And I also, you know, do YouTube. And so, you know, I fell into that pretty quickly. And when I started doing it, I lived at home with my parents. At the time I was in uh, community college and trying to educate myself. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do, didn't really have a real direction, but I, you know, got into this. And it got to the point where when I was streaming, I would maybe have about 20 to 30 viewers. And my parents were they're, they're kind of, they're very old fashioned people actually. And so they did not, I don't want to say they didn't approve, like they didn't let me, but they were not a huge fan of their son sitting at a computer for hours on end talking to that computer. Like imagine how weird that might sound to someone who doesn't really play video games or doesn't really use technology. <laughs> so I can understand it. Uh, but to make matters worse, there's some pretty funky usernames out there. So I've told this this story a bunch of times, and maybe it ended up on YouTube, but since we have the time and I thought of it, I'll bring it up. Um, one of the guys who would donate $5 every now and then, really helped me out in the early goings, was named Buttface McBrainlag. And instead of saying Buttface McBrainlag all the time, I would just say, Hey, Buttface. Thanks, Buttface. Looking good, butt face. Okay, I never said that. But just imagine me sitting in my room. My parents walk upstairs to go, go do something in one of the nearby rooms. And their son, who doesn't know what he wants to do for like as an adult, is struggling through college, is sitting down at a computer saying, Thank you, butt face. So, uh, yeah, I can I can understand why my parents didn't like that. Uh, I'm not a father, but I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to figure that one out. Yeah, my, my parents even, so I ended up moving out, and I worked full-time for a while. Uh, and then, you know, on top of that, I was putting in hours and hours and hours of part-time to build up to where I am today. And... Uh, I remember I mentioned to my mom that I was considering pursuing full-time in this um, and she was just like listing off reason after reason after reason after reason I shouldn't do it and uh, eventually it got to the point like I wasn't gonna handicap myself I wasn't gonna do it if in a risky fashion like I've heard of people just flat out quitting their job and saying oh I just if I sh if I do this for a month I'll be okay that's that's silly that jeopardizes my your future but you know, I saved some money and eventually started to do it, and I just didn't tell her. I didn't live at home anymore. I just didn't tell her. For like a month and a half. She called me. She's like, oh, what's new with work? I said, oh, um, yeah, so I don't, I actually do that whole video game thing now. And then the other end of the line was super silent. And, uh, you know, long story short, she's probably still terrified or something, but... It's been a while now, so she's a little bit more comfortable with it. I feel like I should be telling you Christmas stories. And I'll be honest, I don't feel like re-recording this, uh, re this, because that's going to take a while. I'll have to, I'll have to think of Christmas stories. <laughs> I can't really, <laughs> I can't really think of any right now. Besides me being a little brat, 
I remember my neighbors were more well off than me, and I always will feel guilty about this. I always will feel guilty about this. I remember iPods came out. And my parents couldn't really afford to get me, like, an iPod, because back then it was, like, 400 bucks for one of the basic iPods. Again, understandable. I was a kid. I didn't understand. And uh, they got me an MP3 player, which could hold, like, 80 songs on it. And I recall putting Fall Out Boy albums and Good Charlotte albums on that MP3 player. But anyways, I was, like, oh, kids are so, oh, I hate children. Like, I hate old me. I was actually upset. Like, my parents got me a nice thing, and I was actually upset. And then I found out that my buddy, my neighbor, got iPod, and I was, I was, I got cried or something. And I, I feel so bad about that to this day, guys. We've all, we, we hopefully, we all have something like this. So I'm not the only person. All my stories are just me being a brat, I guess. I don't know. You don't want my Christmas stories. Children are meh. Not cool. Suddenly you guys judge me because you guys are perfect children and cannot relate to this at all. Can you relate to the fact that Fatsob's not producing any villagers? Because Fatsob's not producing any villagers. Red has 12 queued up. In fact, he, Red has 106 villagers right now. Tons of resources coming in. He is so far ahead. Just look at the score. Man. Well, two barracks. Did I miss any early game chat from these guys? No, they didn't chat before the game. Slavetis was ready to go. He didn't complain about the settings. Remember, he has three relics, right? Um, actually, it's two. The third is over here, so he'll get that. The extra golds. All good stuff. And, ooh! This is... Okay. This is interesting. He's building walls back here. I don't really understand this. I feel like... I feel like a wall here would have saved some stone and would be a whole lot easier to lock down. <laughs> okay. Alright, whatever floats your boat, buddy. Christmas story, Christmas story, Christmas story. Oh, I got a Christmas story! Somebody can timestamp it in the comments for people who might want to hear this. I'm sorry, it took me so long, but I just thought of one which was really funny. Alright, so on Christmas Eve, my dad's side of the family gets together, okay? And then on Christmas Day, uh, my immediate family, like my brother, sisters, mom, dad, we wake up and we open presents, and then later on throughout the day, we, we head over to my mom's side, or whatever house that's going to be held. And I remember this particular Christmas Eve, it snowed a lot. And uh, my uncle, he happened to leave something of importance at my parents' house. Uh, so important, in fact, that they called us on Christmas Day and was like, hey, we need that today. Can you just swing that over while you're on your way to your mom's side? So, <laughs> it's myself, my dad, my siblings, my mom, and we're uh, we're driving over to my uncle's place to drop this thing off. I forget what it was. It was probably like a spatula or something dumb. I, I, I don't know what would have been that important. But anyway, maybe it was a camera. Camera, spatula, same thing. And um, so, so anyways, <laughs> there's snow on this road. It has not been plowed properly. And my dad, he's driving with his four-wheel drive. We're good. And he just pulls up on the side of the road next to my uncle's house and my mom says I'll drop it off and so she gets out she walks her way in uh, gives whatever it was off the the camera taking spatula or picture taking spatula and is on her way out my dad says watch this and he does a freaking donut in the street YouTube and not only does he do a donut this is so unlike my dad my dad is not a big risk taker not only does he do a donut, but when he does this donut, my mom was coming out of the home and snow, it was like a wave of snow that hit my mom. <laughs> she had done like her makeup. She was dressed up. She was like so happy. It's Christmas day. I'm with my kids. I'm going to family. Whoosh. 
snow all over my mom. Yeah. <laughs> she, I, I think her exact words were like, I can't believe I married a child. <laughs> oh, man. And my dad, like, I, I freaking love it. He was just laughing. He's like, you'll, you'll, he basically, he didn't say it, but he was thinking, you'll get over this and this will be a funny story someday. That is a good Christmas story. That and actually the time that, as a joke, my my dad put coal on my mom's stocking in the morning. They, they make stockings for each other. And my dad put coal in my mom's stocking. And um, initially, my mom didn't think that was too funny either. But then she got over it pretty quick. And now we laugh about it. So <laughs> apparently, my dad's kind of a troll. Uh, a non-risk-taking troll. So Fat Slob has so little compared to red all right um but red is he's just gonna tech into everything apparently he's he's making elite skirms making light cap getting berserk again getting arm blessed. he's like you give me the time i have the dime i'm going to research everything i can now fat slop he's expecting to have the time and he knows the importance of these extra gold, so he's actually already trebbing these trees to get to the extra golds. Uh, remember, onagers cannot cut down trees in this old data set that he plays with. So, this is what you have to resort to. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. He's doing it pretty quickly. But if you just zoom out and look at these empires, I don't use that word enough, because it is Age of Empires after all. Uh, it's just a significant difference. Now, if this was SimCity, and we were to give these bases scores based on how pretty they are, I would definitely score Fat Slobs an 8 out of 10. Reds would be a 3 out of 10. I mean, economy does not matter. <clears throat> but, um, I guess the farms are okay. It's respectable. But, you know, the random houses... It can kind of hurt. The castle positions aren't very straight. Actually, there's only one. That's nah, it's whatever. But Fatsob, first off, it's always defense. He already got fortified wall. He has so many layers of walls. He uh, He's now going to mass those trebs. He does not have siege engineers yet, which he normally gets pretty early. That gives the, the siege extra range. But he's thinking ahead, and he knows he's going to have plenty of time. 2,000 gold for red and counting. Uh, three relics. A fat slob will just have two. So the longer the game goes, the better the chances for red. And red has shown that he is much better with booming. Do you guys think that fat slob, he plays a lot. Do you feel like he could probably do better with optimizing his builds and go for a faster castle, but really he's just multitasking? And that's why he's multitasking and he knows he'll have the time? Like what if he's at work and Age of Empires is on one computer and then he just goes over, does some work, goes back to the game? What if, he, what if he's freakishly good and he just knows he's going to have the time? I don't know. I mean, I, I've heard crazier theories in, in the world, so. Um, nice outpost. I like that. That is a lot. Okay, how far can that guy that we can't see in there see? And is there even a window on the other side of the outpost? I have so many questions. Nice. Okay, here are the trebs and... We'll see what Fat Slob de decides to do. He's not a fan of that siege workshop. And so say goodbye to that one. That's a waste of resources, Slave Tius. Or Slave Tis. And that's a dead scout. That will be the first kill of the game. So one building destroyed. Red is ready for action, though. He's, he has the Arbalest. He has plenty of options. And as far as I can see, he's upgraded virtually everything. He does need attack upgrades for melee units, so that would be forging. You can actually see it all right here. This is the, the melee upgrades and attack. Uh, you have infantry armor, cab armor. But Fatsop doesn't, he doesn't have any of these things. They do have the same eco text, though. <clears throat> I 
Um, another th Christmas thing I'll bring up is uh, you guys have been super supportive of me this year. And uh, so I, I kind of sporged a little bit with my family. I'm really looking forward to seeing my family. When I upload this, I will be actually with my family. Now, I'm not a very religious person. I don't really care about gifts. I told them not to get me anything, but I just want to be with my family. I, I moved away from my home state in July and I kind of underestimated how much I would miss them because I'm kind of a loner. You know, I'd see my family maybe once a month or something when I lived at home, so I figured a couple times a year wouldn't make a big difference. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's such a weird mix, though, because I hate taking time off. I love to make content, and I know there's always people out there who like to watch, but... I will enjoy my time. He did get Siege Engineers now, so 16 plus 1 range. Uh, Red also got that, though. And now they're both getting forging. Fat Sub's getting masonry, which will give more HP to his buildings. Very important tech that Red did not get. But how many times are players going to make this mistake versus Fat Sub? Where they build all their buildings close to the choke point, ready to fight, and then Fat Sub takes out a few buildings. Apparently, this is going to happen a lot. Because this seems to happen every game. Most of the players I'm seeing not do those things are players that have played Fats Up multiple times. Most of the players who do not do those things are people I recognize from my Twitch stream. <laughs> I recognize their names. And so, I'm like, okay, this person probably has seen my videos. But, you know, I'm not that big a deal. Not everyone has seen my videos. I, I have no way of knowing. Look, look at the scout with the trips from Fats Up. Oh, man. Working towards his scorpions, his onagers, and his traps. We're 46 minutes in. We've had some good story time. I've had other content creators say, T90, do you actually like that fat sob stuff? Do you actually like that force nothing stuff? Nothing happens. And while the game... What happens in the game is very much important to me. Um... More than anything, I just try and entertain with my words. And I feel like the more bland the game is, the more of an opportunity I have to challenge myself to keep people listening, you know? So that's kind of the way I see it. Not that I'm like, oh boy, it's another challenge. I don't know. I, I just have a knack for talking. My family used to always try and play the quiet game with me. Like, first person to talk loses. You know that game? Yeah, well... I, I I didn't I wasn't competitive when it came to that game. Let's let me tell you. <clears throat> My parents actually used to get extra large milkshakes from McDonald's for me on the way home from places, just so I would shut up. <laughs> I and I didn't know that that was their plan either until they told me when I was an adult. And I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of upset to hear that. I thought they were just doing it because they loved me. But all right. <laughs> That reminds me, that reminds me of, um, I listen to Daniel Tosh every now and then, not so much nowadays, but there's this one bit, he's like, sure, I give my, he was, he's, okay, this is a little bit off color, but he, you know, the whole, like, the awful things that, uh, some of the comedians recently in, in the news, like Bill Cosby and stuff have done, um, so he was, like, saying how he didn't approve of that, <clears throat> and he's like, I just don't want things to be skewed, he's like, sure, I give, <laughs> I give my, my girlfriend, Tylenol PM when she asked for some Tylenol, but that's only because that's only because I want to watch the game without any in interruptions. I thought that was funny. <laughs> I did not do that joke. Joke, jo joke, justice. Sorry. Ballistics, blast furnace. It's funny how they're both getting these upgrades at the same time. But Fatslob still he doesn't have berserks out. Um, wow, he has a lot of villagers. A lot more villagers than I normally see from him. And Red's been chop a and through with the trebuchets. And Fatslob, he's doing it as well. Now, Red has Berserks. Not fully upgraded. He needs armor, but he's working on it. He has Arbalest. And he has more gold than Fatslob. Still has to collect this gold. Actually, let's see. There's... 8,000 gold remaining. Most of it's on red side. You have it here and you have it here. 
Fatsup doesn't have as much remain. Uh, let's see if I can figure this out. Sorry, we, we have the time to test. Double click. 2.7k. Um, how good is capture age? I think this will work. Double click. 2, 2k2 plus 3.2k. Yeah. Yeah, so red has more. More in the bank and more long term. There's a blacksmith for Fat Sob. He wants to double down on those upgrades. Oh boy. This is getting intense. Max population for both players. And Red, he just wants to know what's over here. I know this is open. What's going on, though? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay, so he's found out the hard way. Fat Sob, I don't know how he even sees the trees there, but he's clicking trees. Actually making this choke point a little bit wider for himself. And Red thought, okay, the first time didn't work. So let's send in more now. And, alright, that's pretty effective. <laughs> that's pretty effective. Fat Sob, oh, here he deleted his walls so he could see the trees. That's interesting. I, I assume that's what. Yeah, okay. And yeah, now I can see the trees he wants to chop. I think blue strategy quickly. Or, sorry, red strategy quickly becomes I don't want to waste gold units. So I'm going to make trash. You see how many pikemen he has queued up? Whoa, look at the top left 39 berserks, 42 skirms, 75 pikes, and 10 light cav queued up. Now, Fatslav is going for that classic Fog of War trick where you place Palisade Foundations. You don't actually want to, to build them. Uh, but if you place the Foundations, this is not a bug, it's a feature, YouTube. You can actually see any units that walk over it. You can't place the Foundations if there's units already there. I, he's just forgotten about the bill or he doesn't care. And now Red is sent in Pikemen. So it's 22 kills for Fatslav and... Two for red. But yeah, that unfortunately is going to make things a little bit awkward for me. Whoa, that would be Gaia's point of view. Because um, I, I can't get rid of that. Oh, goodness gracious, red. What are you doing? Killing these poor wild animals. What did they do to you? But yeah, um, I wish there was a way I could remove that, but I, I can't. And it makes the minimap look pretty awkward. Oh, guys! I just realized that I could tell my editor to put Santa Claus on the thumbnail for the Fat Slob video. Hmm. This is... Th I have to make some decisions because every other, every other Fat Slob video has had Obama. <laughs> Fat Slob actually asked me why are all the YouTube thumbnails with Obama? And I said, well, because the first one was and it became popular, so I decided to just stick with it. The only reason I did it for the first one was because it just, you know, I thought Obama laughing really suited the whole situation. Had I known who our next president was going to be, I maybe would have waited before I showed <laughs> Fat Slop to the world. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Let's, let's avoid that topic, shall we? Let's avoid the topic that I brought up in front of all of you. That's just classic YouTube classic youtuber right there I brought it up but I'm not responsible for what happens after I after I brought it up so Fatsop's clearing the space he is clearing it all up he does not like these trees not one bit 4,000 gold for both of them and the bank should red care about the kill KD Probably not too much. Uh, the lack of berserks hurt. Man, people underestimate these heavy scorpions, man. A and the onagers. He has arbs and he has berserks. He has skirms. No one wants to make siege. Red. He does not have a siege workshop. He has. Quick maths. 250 units queued up. <laughs> Red has 250 units queued up right now. 
Can he hit Fat Slop with these units? Right now he has a 2 to 50 KD. With that level of production, he could actually push it, possibly. If he kills two units for every 47 Fat Slop kills, but Red can, can produce like that, I mean, maybe he has a chance. Fat Slob is still clearing out the trees. He has so many scorpions. Uh, Red, he has trash units. He, he figures, I have the resources. So let's go. Let's kill something. It was a, definitely a good thought. Definitely a creative and good thought. I have an idea. If you played Fat Slob, can you tell me your experiences? Because... Now, actually, tell me if you did play Fat Slop, tell me if it was before or after you saw my video. And then tell me, you know, what, what the composition was. Because I feel like it's obviously a very common mistake that players just... They don't make the units that Fat Slop makes. Now, that's clear to me. Clear as day. And oh, goodness, Red, don't do this to me! Not on Christmas! Oh, my goodness. And now the Berserks, please don't do it. Fat Slob, don't do it to the man. He has to do it. It's war. Wow. Um, 100 kills for Fat Slob. The KD actually improved for Red. And that's that's just how bad it is. Uh, 10 kills for him. 115 deaths. Now, guys, this game here is going to be an absolute slaughter. Okay? The KD... It's not going to be all that special for Red. However, with the amount of production he has, I mean, Fat Slop has four units on the way. Red has 200 units on the way. So he has cleared out Onagers. That's probably his logic. Just to make less effective units, but slowly whittle down these the, the siege. Can he make Fat Slop bail? What do you think? This is kind of where I wish I had a Twitch chat to interact with because I feel like we could have, like, some people could bring up some excellent points that I'm not thinking of. We'd have someone crunching the numbers on the KD and the amount of production and the odds. He even changed formation there, Red. All right. And look, he'll kill some monitors. I mean, no gold units for gold units. That's something. And now he sends in Berserks, which are gold units. Oh, the <laughs> No! Bad boy. Slave. Or servant. Sorry, we have to be more politically correct. What are you doing? It's a lot of pikemen. How many barracks does he have, though? Eleven? Uh, he's, produce he's, he's going to be producing out of all of them, though. The crazy thing is, the KD's awful. But it's kind of working. If that sub has sent his trebs forward, this just has had a feeling of inevitability about it where we don't think Fat Slob can ever be touched. But Red brings his own trebs out of nowhere, and the units continue to patrol in. And the real issue for Fat Slob here, I think, is that he's low, he's low on onager numbers and his scorpions are way behind. So he's not able to push, he's just able to protect his trebs. Um, red protect, he attack, and most importantly, he, he fires back. Beautiful. Now, if red had Onager follow-up, man, Onager follow-up to this could flatten the scorpions and he could push this easily, but he's not doing it. He's just spamming unit after unit after unit. Over 300 deaths. This is, like, very, very much like war. <laughs> in the past. People were disposable. <laughs> uh, people were very disposable, and normally you'd just be diving in and it'd be like suicide, man. This got a little bit too real, but man. Red does not value human life, apparently, and Fat Slob, he's going to retreat against this. Now, because of the kills that Fat Slob's getting, his score is super high. But resource-wise, it's not high for him. 
And Red has three relics. So I know for a large portion there, there was some frustration from people. Like, oh my goodness. Why did T90 pick this game? Red is an idiot. He's not making gold units. But could he possibly push Fatsaw back without making the gold units? Every single unit that Fatsop's creating, and he's creating eight, no, nine, yes, uh, is all gold. There's a viewer of mine out there, his name's Tomatrix, longtime viewer on Twitch, nice guy, um, and he loves Byzantines, and he, he always has said for years, Byzantine trash kills all. He's like, because it doesn't cost gold, you can produce it forever. Well, it's not Byzantines, but you can see the power of gold units, that's for sure. Byzantines would be better because they'd have Halbadir, but, you know, and it's dirt cheap, but still. I really wonder, so Red has 112 eco. Um, now, it's more all-in, it's more risky to do what I'm about to suggest, but with only 200 population space, if he were to delete 50 villagers, that would be an extra 50 military on the fields. If that's up selling wood right now for gold. It's, it's, it, 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 he doesn't know that if you hold shift that you could sell it in larger quantities, apparently. But um But yeah, anyways, maybe if Red would have 50 more pop space, he could push this further. I mean, it's really gonna come down to the siege and if he can get a follow-up. If he can pack up these trebs, send them forward, hit Fat Slob if Fat Slob gets a big retreat in. To take out the castles. I mean, if Fatsob doesn't have his castles, he can't make his berserks, and then his composition, it's not the same. It's always Trebs, Onagers, Scorpions, Berserks. You take Berserks out of the equation, and suddenly Fatsob doesn't have as much meat in front. Never see Fatsob make rams. <clears throat> Four hundred and seventy-seven kills for Fat Slop. And he's ready to have a go again. It is very satisfying to see Scorpions destroy units. <laughs> very satisfying. We're one hour and eleven minutes into this game. Red is making some berserks now. Now, this is getting more on the expensive side when it comes to losses, but he does have the gold to spend. And he's sniping a few traps. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. I hope the audio levels are fine for this. I hope the game's no sound is not too loud. I'm actually going to lower it a little bit. It's kind of too late, but... I set up the new version of Capture Age. Um, I, I, I'm on their Legend status, so I'm doing the $25 a month subscription so I can have the servers because they deserve it, and, and then some. But like, all my default settings have been removed, and I just haven't had the chance to change it yet. You could check it out too, by the way. You can check that out as well, and it is uh, completely free. If you if you, you don't have to contribute, if you don't want it. And Red doesn't have to make Onagers or Scorpions if he doesn't want to. Capture Age. More like... Um... Ah, oh man, I that was a great opportunity for a joke. But I can't think of one. That Slob's units are just... He's getting purely out-popped by Red. Red still has more gold, food, and wood. He's somehow doing it. I think Fatsob might be getting a little bit distressed now. He is below 100 gold. Can Fatsob hold on, or will he be slowly whittled down? Now here's something. Will Fatsob have to make his own trash? Because you just don't see that. Will he have to make skirms? Will he have to make light calves? Will we see something out of the box from him? Or will he sell most of that 31k wood to get more gold and just go right back at it? Yep, okay. There's wood. <laughs> there it goes. He's getting more gold. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that's a good return. There's a lot of wood left. There's actually 612,000 wood remaining. You can see that exact number there with Capture Age. 474 gold remaining. Where is that? 
Oh, it's here? Yeah, that's it. That's actually not all of it, though. Now I have questions. Did Fatsob leave a tile somewhere? What? Okay, let's just wait until that, uh, that tile is complete and we'll see what happens. Guys, Red is definitely thinking about pushing this. Fatsob is backed up. KD's been got awful, we know that. But he has a whole lot of trebs here. And if he were to just find an opportunity to push Fatslob... It may be, uh, you know, take a big fight, clear out the siege, take out the castles, take out the siege workshops, and then GG. Maybe, sort of, kind of, possibly. See, this is what bothers me. It says it's 323 gold. I don't know when that updates. Hold on, I need to look. Does that update every 25? Oh, it's close. Maybe it's just not quite as exact. Maybe that is all of it. Great job, Red. Skirmishers, fantastic here against Onagers and Scorpions. <laughs> but he still has the production going. And 200 units queued up. This is bothering me now, so I, we're, we're going to pay attention to that. I think that that is the only gold remaining. Wait, did I just hear a stable from Vatslob? Oh, it's a, it's more stables from Red. Okay. Ah, I see. All right. Vatslob's not deviating from the plan. He's also not building new lumber camps. How dare he not have more efficient lumberjacks when he has 24,000 wood? Red? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. Oh man, wait, he got through with one light cap. Worth it. Worth it. Attack the onagers. What would the light cap do? <laughs> Fats love sending all of his berserks back for one light cap. Oh. Rip. Rest in pepperonis. Ripperoni. Enderoni. Fats love sees an opportunity. He sees an opportunity to take out those trebs. And take out those trebs, he will. Takes out a few. Now, Red has some of his own berserks in the mix. The fat slob has this nice little hill with his scorpions, though. Oh! Well, hold on. I don't think fat slob's expecting this. Red is using his trebs to task those scorpions. Or not task the scorpions, a task those scorpions. That hurt Fatsob a little bit. Oh. Red. <laughs> Red. Not like this, man. Surely this won't work. Oh, man. This production's still insane. He'll take out some trebuchets. He's taking out some scorpions. Fatsob. 150 population. Red has 173. It's actually doing this with the production. Now, imagine if his buildings would have been placed a little bit more safely. Less space in between them. He probably could have had 10, 12, 15 more buildings in the same area. Could have more production buildings then. If you only have four or five production buildings, how many units you have queued up is not really that helpful. I like how Fatslob still has his scout. <laughs> like... Why why not send that in? Oh, I'm sorry for the yawn. I apologize. <clears throat> that is just future me with the carb coma from all the food on Christmas Day. And, you know, come to think about it, if you don't celebrate Christmas, you, you are going to be feeling good. You won't have that, like, carb... You won't have that post-holiday guilt... So congratulations on that. When I return home from family and come back to making content, my voice is going to sound fatter, okay? I will then be the fat slob. Alright. Red's back up to 200 pop, just like that. He has 20 trebuchets. Now here's a pretty sick statistic with capture age. Should have focused on this more. See this? 
Look, look what these three onagers have done. 100 kills. Look at those stats. Hit rate is 65.1%. It hit 103 times out of the 158 times they have fired. Now, if you're on the Definitive Edition train, all that hype with the new game, Microsoft, make this happen, please. Imagine these stats and this zoom and all these features with the new game. It would be an absolute travesty if in a few months' time this isn't this isn't implemented yet, man. 185 kills for the Scorpions. That is pretty impressive. Now, Red's Trebs, I noticed, had uh, only 9 kills. You're not going to see many of these stats on Red's units. <laughs> because he just loses them after he kills something. Like... I, I get the logic, I, I get the spam, but... Skirms and Pikes, huh? It's kind of working, that's the crazy thing. Alright, I mean, the Onager's are going down, Fatsob's gold count is not that high, he still has wood to sell. And Red has sent one Treb forward. Fatsob can't have that, and that Treb will get taken out. The Light Cav arrive. And I don't know if you remember what happened that last time, but this normally is not going to go too well for Red. But it is worth. It is worth if he kills the Onagers. Worth it. I doubt Fatsub will repair either. Actually, Fatsub might end up killing them. Wow, saved. Okay, calculated. It, it, man, if I could just take control of Red's point of view take control of it. He's 10,000 score behind, but just make Onager. I think just Onager would make the difference. 115 skirms, 115 pikes queued up. Over 250 units now queued up in his buildings. Now, if you build forward buildings, it can be quite nice. You can't build them too forward because Fatsob's waiting, but Forward buildings can be beautiful because then the production's a lot closer to where the fight's going. But Red is creeping forward. He's further than he was 20 minutes ago. And he really, I guess, wants to raid Fatsob. But it's just not working out. Scorpions now have 230 kills. Now, how that works is if a scorpion dies, in fact, we just saw it, uh, however many kills that individual scorpion had is removed from the whole group. So this one here had uh, 20 kills, 10 kills, 16. So it has all those individual stats for the uh, individual units. Great time for tracking from Fatslop. More line of sight for his berserks. And he's repopping with Trebs. This has been a, br a long and brutal marathon of a game on Christmas Day. Uh, there's no gold remaining. I didn't get back to that topic for a while, my bad. But no gold remaining, so that was all the remaining gold for Red. And guys, get hyped. Because this man who refuses to make many gold units is going to go in with 19 trebuchets. Fat slob. He has about 15. Fatsob's firing with his. Red has 100 units storming forward to Fatsob's base. Can he take out these castles? Remember how important those castles are for Fatsob. Fatsob only has 3 units queued up. That castle will just melt. Just like that. But the scorpions are still behind for Fatsob. He still has this, the, the berserks. Which are going to be so important to this. He hasn't even fought with the Berserks, actually. He's just sending them in after the trebuchets, I believe. And so Red, he's taking out some of Fatsob's trebs. He took out one castle. But now he definitely will not have the gold to make more trebs. And Fatsob has found his moment, found his opportunity. 1,200 kills, by the way. To apply a big, big blow to Slave. And... Red has the production coming in. Look at this. It's crazy, but They're just getting chewed up The unit composition is not good enough. I I love the production. I love the effort I even love the thought because I have yet to see a player 
being so insistent upon spamming the wrong units. But Fatsob's KD is getting padded, his score is getting padded, and Red says <laughs> Red says, sorry, I have to go. GG. Hmm. Convenient timing there, huh? It it's just straight up unfortunate that he had to go right after losing all of his trebs. <laughs> Sorry, he does have one trebuchet remaining. What a bummer. I'm sure it was just a coincidence. He definitely just didn't want to give Fatsob credit. Um, <laughs> wait, no, he definitely didn't want to... Wait, how do I word this? The point is... I don't know how to word things anymore. I highly doubt he had to go at that time. I think that's more like, yeah, I think I'm dead. That was demoralizing. You have 13,000 more score than me. And I'm going to say GG, but I don't want you to feel good about yourself because I feel awful. <laughs> that might have been it right there. Uh, I've done that before. I've done that before. Like, oh, you're boring. Or, oh, I have to go. Sorry. This, this isn't entertaining enough for me. I've seen all the comments over the years about Fat Slob. But he continues to play. And I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I never know if you guys are going to enjoy Fat Slob videos because they're all so similar. But this one, he ended up with 1,232 kills, 227 deaths. These scorpions right here, these 29 scorpions had 291 kills, actually, which is very impressive. Uh, that's probably the most kills I've seen from a single group of units ever. However, I was not paying attention to this feature in many Fat Slob games before, so that's on me. All right, so we'll get into the achievements now. Uh, we already saw the kills. Uh, the resources collected is an interesting one for me. Fatsob's extra gold probably came from the extra wood that he then sold. Uh, because the relic gold was higher for red, and red had that extra gold. I, they both had a three-tile gold, I guess. So the only logical explanation, if red had more relic gold, is that Fatsob sold more to get that gold count. Um, that is a pretty bland timeline, but another timeline where the opponent of Fat Slob has more earlier of both eco and military. If you were to just cut this off, remove the names, you'd think, well, Blue needs to improve. He's never going to win games, but no. <laughs> Walls. Walls is all he needs and time. <laughs> and he did, excuse me, sorry, he did make the walls and he had plenty of time. So a week and a half ago, we had a video where Red said, uh, sorry, or where the opponent said, remove the walls. Fatslob did that, and he won the game. Here, Fatslob, he had to play a little bit more defensive, and the opponent just spammed units towards him, and he was able to get the win here, too. Uh, I can't say that I'm going to upload Fatslob videos as frequently as some of you might like. I uploaded one, uh, or it would be two, I guess, in December. So we'll probably still stick to like every other month or whenever I see something interesting just to spice it up. I don't want to do too many fat slob games. Then you guys might get bored. But thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you guys for hearing me out. Since it's Black Forest and a fat slob game, I kind of have to ramble a bit, told some weird stories, um, and had a bit of a heart to heart at the beginning. Uh, guys, it means a lot to me to be able to reach you, get, reach out to you guys um, through streams and YouTube videos and. Hopefully make your days better and give you some laughs, give you some things to think about, and thank you for the continuous support. I hope you guys have a great day. Happy holidays to everyone who's out there, and uh, Happy New Year. It's coming up. I'll see you soon.